Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here, and earlier this evening, a new PTR build hit. PTR, patch 10.0.7 that is. And with it came a few minor Warlock changes. Uh, to Aft, to Demo, to Destro. A couple of them were the changes that were announced a few weeks ago that actually made it to PTR bug fix wise. So I want to look at that tonight. And then we also, I took the time to grind out the patch 10.0.7 ring. The one with the the one with the, with the three sockets you can put in different gems for damage effects and all that the big question was does it proc the aranog fire ring uh the answer is that it does uh it's so we'll look at that sign as well so a bit of warlock tuning some 10.0.7 stuff and well i guess all of that now the past few weeks i will admit have been sort of slow for a while there hasn't really been a whole lot going on outside of just i don't know raid reclears a bit of mythic plus and then some minor ptr stuff i am hoping that we are very close to patch 10.1 hitting ptr and hopefully 10.0.7 hitting retail soon because there are a lot of big warlock changes now over the next week or so i have some plans to number one get a video out on destruction uh talking about what is wrong with destruction because it is one of the highest simming specs in the game but it is seeing the least play of any spec in the raid and also a video looking at updated 10.0.7 sims so i can figure that out and uh yeah that should be the plan for this week barring any major announcements so as always we chorus add-ons profiles in the video links to my twitch and discord down below where they're all for free for you guys and also want to give a huge shout out to my patrons before we get too far in the video as well thank you for all support on patreon guys Ten thousand times i really appreciate it thank you so much uh if you guys are looking to support on patreon should be linked up here as well as down below in the video description so that being said let's just jump right into the changes Alrighty, so jumping into them there's really only like one or two for each spec and realistically the changes weren't very large today so this video is going to be looking at the changes that came in a few bug fixes i'll talk about them as we go and then like looking at it damage wise per each spec and then we'll look at the aranog slash 10.0.7 ring interaction and go from there so affliction off the bat people are asking a lot this is just a simple tooltip change nothing really changed here it's just changing the wording of inevitable demise it's pretty undertuned in the first place in 0.07 um but there is that just a simple tooltip change nothing else changed here now when it comes to kindled malice they have indeed as far as the tooltips concerned, reduced the damage that Kindled Malice, which is your trait here, your new talent in the aft tree, it replaced um, Breath and Agony, which replaced uh, Xavier Teachings. They, they nerfed this from 16% to 15%. Now, I think what likely happened here is that this is actually 7.5% roughly, and it rounds up in the tooltip to 8, and this is 7.5% again. Realistically, a very, very, very small nerf. We'll look at after in a minute uh, with the Aranog rings and things and see how much Rapture does, but a very, very, very minuscule nerf, if even a nerf at all. Uh, TLDR app, app is still looking very strong for 10.0.7, so uh, we'll take it. Now, moving on from there, Demonology had a couple bug fixes, I guess, sort of. So the first thing here, Umber Blaze, now uh, gives you a big Demon Bolt or Shadow Bolt at 75 stacks, and it was 100. Now, this was announced a few weeks ago when the larger changes came into Warlock. It was bugged up until today's build, so that hasn't even been fixed. We'll look at that. It was a problem, though, with Stolen Power, I sort of would say, in the Demo Tree. We'll get to that in a minute here. Uh, number two, Umbral Blaze. This is the talent that has indeed replaced uh, the Hounds of War talent in the Demo Tree in the far right side. It, has, it was bugged last week. The damage was putrid on the ability. The damage was bugged, though. I guess the ability was bugged. Uh, basically, it was doing rank one damage at rank two. So I would assume this modifier was added in here for it to do double the damage at rank two. Uh, it is still currently bugged doing rank one damage at rank two, but we'll look at it just to see the damage it does because, well, you know, yeah. I do believe the damage will increase somehow as well, just baseline, but we'll see where that goes. And uh, yeah, as far as Destro is concerned, the only real change that hit Destro was the Burned Ashes change, which we'll talk about a bit in the Destro video coming later this week, but it's also important to look at here on PTR because it actually is working now at six stacks and not four. Um, so yeah, quick summary there. Let's just jump right into the Demonology Solemn Power slash Umbral Blaze changes. Alrighty, so very briefly getting into the demo stuff here, uh, we're gonna pull two points out of Imp Gang Boss and just put them in Umbral Blaze. Not really a big deal. Uh, it should work out just fine. I'll pull a point out of Dread Lash and probably put it uh, in Bell Sunder here for a single target build. Normal Tyrant stuff, Reign of Tyranny, and Torrin, Infernal Command. We're playing Immutable Hatred here, which does indeed appear to be higher currently uh, than Nether Portal in, like, consistent damage. We're playing Implosion. It's not a big deal. Uh, this is more or less a single target-esque build, playing Vile Fiend and Reign of Tyranny. But the big thing here I want to focus on 
is the umbral blaze damage now as we mentioned they did indeed buff this or i guess try and fix the bug with it doing rank two damage or rank one um but it is still bugged at doing rank one damage at rank two same thing how we're going to word it uh but briefly it's not just the damage of umbral blaze that realistically needs to be looked at it's also the proc rate so let's just jump into combat here once again we're not playing another portal just going right in here uh start casting some spells grim war well vile fiend we'll do a typical opener uh we got a calling proc which is sick cast our dogs here hand of cool damn watch for an uh umbral blaze proc didn't get a proc we'll hand again and again we'll just tyrant uh we'll strength as they're going here now the big thing it's a 15 percent chance for umbral blaze to proc right whenever you cast hand of Gul'dan. there's no aoe implications it's only on the target that you hit with umbral blaze or hit with hand of Gul'dan, i should say but the thing is there's a lot of rng tied into umbral blaze at times i've seen procs back to back to back on pull basically at times i've seen no procs for a long time and Demos already expect the sort of riddle with RNG at times. Uh, Soul Conduit refunds, Tyrant crits. There's a proc right there, Umbra Blaze. Let's find that on the meter here, right? So we Tyranted once. We're going to Dogs here. We're going to Vile Fiend. Where's Umbra Blaze? Right there. It is below my MS of the Blue Shoulders by about double. <laughs> so uh, now it is once again doing damage at rank 1 out of 2 with 2 points being in the actual ability. But even if it was at rank two out of two it would be doing uh, it proc again there it would be doing about probably two to two and a half percent of our damage right now which we've seen let's see we've seen i think three procs yeah it, it's basically three ticks per proc um so the ability likely needs a substantial damage buff i don't think it should be like you know seven percent of damage or whatever but with it being a two talent point commitment in your spec tree and it being more single target oriented I think somewhere around like Legion Strike damage would be okay. Right in here, four to five, four and a half to five percent. I wouldn't even put aside that maybe five and a half percent, but where it's currently at with the amount of RNG mixed into Demology and just, well, honestly, Umbra Blaze on its own, and it only having single target implications, it needs some help. Uh, and for what it's worth, Inquisitor's Gaze, your eyeball, is doing two percent here. My Broodkeeper Ring is doing 1.7 percent, and where umber blaze is doing 1.7 as well so honestly this is even one of the higher times i've seen umber blaze here it's procking a good bit it really doesn't even proc as much we've gotten back to back to back procs it looks like um regardless for a two point talent being in this part of the tree here where you can put two points in let's say imp gang boss or put a point in uh dread lash and put a point in shadows by even or put two points in fell covenant if you wanted there's a lot more single target value in those abilities and there is putting two points in umbra blaze which is also rng and a pretty low chance to proc let's be honest at 15 percent so the other thing with demonology is that they did indeed fix the bug with stolen power it now does proc at 75 stacks and not 100 stacks which is nice but the problem with stolen power is that it's a demon bolt or shadow bolt damage amp right so let's say we're playing the pure single target build i believe we're pulling points here i hope i can remember this from uh, being this old and things uh, so we have tyrant uh soulbound tyrant ring of tyranny so you're playing there's rules volition pit lord and gulvan's ambition and typically you put two points in sack souls where do you find that point for or for stolen power you can have 10 points max from basically this row down and we have 10 here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten where do you find the talent point for stolen power i really don't think the pit lord is worse than stolen power certainly not reign of tyranny or gwd and i don't think you pull a point from sack souls to put it in stolen power because it's it's almost i mean sack souls buff stolen power in the first place as well and sack souls is a consistent source of damage being every shadow bolt every demon bolt is buffed by your pets that are out right versus stolen power yes stacking quickly and everything else but i don't really know where you pull damage from to actually get stolen power or pull a point from point from i should say now you are playing fall covenant you are playing power siphon you are playing shadows bite so there's a lot of demon bolt shadow bolt amps in here i'd probably say you pull a point from Gul'dan's ambition which is pit lord it's an odd three-ish minute cd if you're trying to go stolen power route but realistically i don't think stolen power makes it's not as good as Gul'dan's ambition i don't believe but nonetheless let's test it out and uh see where it goes so a good solution here probably to move stolen power 
Put stolen power up here, maybe somewhere else. I don't know. But being down here, there's really no world where this is taken with Bolt Build, I don't think. But nonetheless, let's take a look at it. So the big thing here, this weak war will track stolen power stacks here. You can see it up here as well if you want to, whenever I get in combat. And uh, yeah, so let's do it. We're going to jump in, uh, siphon. Let's go. So we're going to open out a portal. We don't have Pit Lord once again. We're going to portal, Solver, and Grimoire, Wild Fiend. We got a dog, Prox. We'll launch those. Hand, Bolt, Hand, Bolt, hand again. You can see the shadow or the, the stacks coming in here in a second. There's two stacks. We got demonic strength. Shadow bolt here, 14 stacks, 15, 16. And they'll start stacking faster and faster the more imps you get out. Because tyrants out, so they're all casting without losing any energy, right? So 55. Basically, we're there. We're gonna dogs, we're gonna power siphon and launch a big bolt for 58k, something like that, right? Now, this happens quite often because there's so many imps out right now, right? There, we're it's stacking again, we can launch a bolt again here, and look at how fast it stacks over and over and over, right? Now, if you notice here on my buffs as well, I'm not sure if this is a recent change or it's been this way for a while. Maybe somebody in the comment section can let me know. I thought that when stolen power hit max stacks, like 75 or 100, it would stay at 75 or 100 stacks until you cast the bolt, and then it would start accruing stacks again. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. We haven't played with it in literal years. But the cool thing is, like, watch these stacks, right? 57, 58. We get 75 here. Uh, 75 about now, right? There's the stack. It's accruing stacks. Well, we had a stack and it cast. But, I mean, uh, it continues to accrue stacks. 15, 20, whatever, 25, whenever your imps are casting. And you can still hold the large Demon Bolt slash Shadow Bolt damage amp until you cast a Shadow Bolt. Now, it is a bit awkward that... I believe if you have a Shadow Bolt bit like mid cast and you hit that stack amount, like right about, let's say like here ish roughly, here's 75 about now. So it's stacking again, and there's the proc, right? Or I guess the effect. If you're like mid Shadow Bolt cast, I believe if it's even mid travel time, when it hits, it will consume the stack. So it's almost like if you're trying to leverage Power Siphon big Demon Bolts, you have to watch the stacks. And maybe possibly even like cancel cast your Shadow Bolt, depending on how fast you're accruing stacks, if you're looking for a big Demon Bolt. Because let's be honest, Demon Bolt versus Shadow Bolt. Uh, where is Shadow Bolt? Um, I don't even, I probably missed it. Where is Shadow Bolt? It's there. Uh, it's literally double, if not more. I've seen bigger Demon Bolts being 200k plus. But the big thing, as far as consistency goes, I feel like Sack Souls is going to be your better option. Because realistically, you're not pulling a point out of Pit Lord. You're probably pulling a point out of Sack Souls of anything. But I don't think pulling a point out of Sack Souls or Reign of Tyranny or Gul'dan's Ambition is worth it to get a point in Solemn Power. So, I mean, it's cool that it's a lower max stacks to get the effect, right? But realistically, if they want Solemn Power to be a relevant trait, probably they move it somewhere. Move it like up here, maybe where Shadow's Bite is. Somewhere else in the tree where there's a one point talent you can get. That makes sense buffing demon bolt i think this sort of does born of blood goes into maybe stolen power which goes into power siphon uh and or bloodbound imps or dread calling i think it makes sense and just boot this out and put something else here as a capstone right but tldr the ability is working it can lead to some pretty fat demon bolts but i think for cons consistency's sake your better option is pulling a point out of here keeping the full you know empowerment here in Gul'dan's, keeping full tyrant empowerment and just two points in stack souls. As cool as stolen power is, I don't really think it's worthwhile. So when it comes to the destruction changes, the only change that actually happened to Destro for all of 10.0.7 PTR is the fact that they've made burn to ashes now stack to six uh, from four. And we talked about it a few weeks ago when the change was announced. Now we pulled up logs for terrorists and other fights. Realistically, the vast majority of the time you don't drop below one stack of burned ashes in single target in cleave it's mostly sort of due to madness and it's limited duration and how it influences the specs rotational fluidity this will be a topic in the destro video that comes out in a few days also it's a larger topic in this video but i want to show how burned ashes is currently playing in combat on ptr and you know there's that now we can also see how close incinerate is to chaos bolt because it's actually pretty insane as well so if you're playing soul fire build all that uh, normal opener, we're going to cast our soul fire to kickstart our damage. Go infernal. We're going to pot because why not? Conflagrate and begin dumping bolts. Watch burn to ashes stacks. So there's two. There's four. I'm going to incinerate. Here comes five. Conflagrate. Uh, here comes six. And I mean, for the most part, like, 
I can weave unincinerate in, but you're pretty much just capped here still, right? But the thing is, you'd be capped here, whether it's four stacks, six stacks, even two stacks, right? And watch how often, uh, often's a word I can use, I end up dumping stacks of burned ashes, right? I weave and incinerate when I can, but this is madness playstyle. You're consistently casting chaos bolts right here. A bit of a lull in overall like casting, right? Like for chaos bolts, I can maybe get one more incinerate in here and conflagrate. So like that one extra incinerate was sort of maybe theoretically buffed by the change to burned ashes, but realistically you can play around that pretty easily. Uh, big soul fire, which is pretty sick. And you very rarely, if ever, drop below one stack of burned ashes in the first place, right? Due to how madness, it, madness is, how you want to cast with madness being a thing. We're at six stacks again, and there's not really a whole lot changing here. Now, Destro feels basically the same. It's influenced by Madness, five second chaos bolt window, weaving incinerates, weaving conflict rates. If you're playing with soul fire, you can pretty much cast the soul fire on cooldown as long as you have eradication up and burnt and uh roaring blaze by a conflict rate. But we'll get more into this in the Destro video that comes out later this week. But the six stack burn to ashes change really didn't do much at all. My hope is that it's more or less one of those things where they're like, okay. We're going to try and band-aid fix this for a little while and maybe influence it or influence it, change it in 10.1. As at this point, Burn to Ashes at 6 stacks really doesn't do anything different than Burn to Ashes at 4 stacks does. And look at the damage breakdown here. So I've seen Incinerate sitting about 2% lower than Chaos Bolt for what it's worth. Uh, max Incinerate being 144k crit-wise, max Chaos Bolt being 147k. And I've seen, typically, if I go longer on the dummy here, Incinerates at like 28%, like 27, and Chaos Bolt's like 29, 30. It, it gets closer and closer until we get back to our Infernal again. And typically, my max Incinerate crits are higher than my max Chaos Bolt crits, which some might like that, some might not. Uh, realistically, I wouldn't mind seeing them pull some damage from Incinerate and put it back into Chaos Bolt, as long as they got the, the tuning and the, the reallocation of damage like done correctly. Um, but it sort of is what it is. So Destro feels the same. Six stacks of burned ashes is sort of working, but realistically, it doesn't really do a whole lot for Destro. Well, I guess as a whole. Alrighty, and when it comes to Affliction, now there was the very, very slight change to this talent here, uh, Kindle of Malice being 15% down from 16. It might have just been a tooltip change in the first place. I don't know. It's very, very minuscule. Doesn't matter. ID was not actually changed as far as like damage is concerned. It was just changed tooltip wise, wording wise. But the one thing I want to look at for Affliction, and this is actually universal for every spec, but Affliction was affected the most by this, is the patch 10.0.7 ring and the interaction it might have, it, it does, with the Aranog ring, Seal of Darinus Chosen. Now, this is the 10.0.7 ring. I went out on the island and got it. It took, it took like an hour, but we got it. Um, my main question was, does this stone equip dealing damage has a chance to set the enemy on fire, dealing a dot of fire damage over seven seconds? Does this proc the Aranog ring for any spec, but I mean affliction the most because affliction suffers a lot from the Inquisitor's gaze nerve. Uh, this rock here increases the damage of this thing. It makes it chaos damage and this thing is irrelevant. It won't do any damage here, I don't think, right? Um, but the big thing, does it proc the Aranog ring? The answer is yes, it actually does, but unfortunately, this is basically Inquisitor's Gaze 2.0 because it is a low proc rate, which then has a chance to proc the ring. Um, so I'll take off Inquisitor's Gaze here. So the only fire effect that I'm using is going to be the 10.0.7 uh, Forbidden Reach ring, whatever. Now it does indeed appear to have a bit of a lower proc rate for Affliction than it does Destro, like this effect here, uh, this. Then it does Destro and Demo. I don't know why. It could be a dot thing. It probably is. Let's be honest. Um, but you'll see here, the only effect that I have on that does fire damage or chaos damage because of this effect here is going to be the Onyx uh, Amulet with this thing in it here, right? So let's get into combat here. Clear this out. Uh, we are playing Dark Lair, Vile Tank, Dark Lair, Spire, and Soul Rot and PTR uh, for, in single target. And uh, yeah, let's go. I didn't stack my pet. No, I did. Close enough, it's fine. Let's go. Doesn't matter. Um, we're looking for ring procs anyways, right? So you'll notice in the enemy, if the actual uh, like like ring procs, like the fire gem or whatever, it'll have like a little red glowing effect here, right? Uh, we're going to rapture a bit. It's a bit of a scuffed opener. Doesn't matter. We're not, we're not looking for damage. Just looking for overall 
ring procs, right? So I'll pull this up over here too. The ring is called like fire something. Uh, I forgot what it's called exactly, but it'll probably pop in a second tier two here. Uh, towards the bottom, unsurprisingly, like everything else for affliction. Uh, I will say the eight second dread touch uptime, or I guess like length feels so much better than I thought it would. Uh, it's actually insane. <laughs> Like, it makes playing AF with Bile Taint and Dread Touch just feel so much better. Uh, hoping for a proc here. There it is. So, Fell Flame, right? That's the actual ring. Stop. It's this... <laughs> it's the ring from the island proccing. It's Fell Flame. Now, unfortunately, it didn't proc Seal of the Arena Chosen, which is, you know, an issue in itself. It's very, very similar to the interaction that Inquisitor's Gaze has with Seal of the Arena Chosen because it's RNG on top of RNG. If it procs, there's a chance for the other effect to proc. It procced again here. Still no there and shows him proc. Let's keep it rolling for a little while. Try and get a proc here and there. Uh, this is not optimal damage for as worth. There. There's a proc right there. It procced a third time. You see it, you see it rising up in damage here. And there's Brewkeeper's Blaze. So it can indeed proc the ring. But the first Aranog ring being Brewkeeper's Blaze procced a minute and a half into the fight. We had no procs for the first minute. And Fell Flame also uh, didn't proc until a minute into the fight, and then it procced back to back right here. So it's RNG on top of RNG. Now you can play a build. Let me try and get a combat here. You can play just the full fire build, uh, fire build with Inquisitor's Gaze, with the 10.0.7 ring having the fire effect in it, and even hey, uh, throw on an Eye of Skull Vault, which can also indeed proc Seal of the Inner Chosen. But I'll show you here as well. The actual Diarana's Chosen Ring is still relatively lackluster because you're literally stacking an RNG, of, like three different RNG effects trying to get the ring to proc. So let's open up here. Got a, We actually got a proc from one of the rings there. Uh, did it proc the ring? It did not. Okay, it's a bit unfortunate. It's all right. We're going to Vile Taint. We're going to go again. There's Fell Flame. There's Fell Meteor. And Inquisitor's Gaze might proc at some point. We'll see. Inquisitor's Gaze is like the highest RNG effect I've seen in a long time. Uh, I also didn't stack my pet because I changed the talent, but it's fine. But at times, I've seen Inquisitor's Gaze being literally 7.5 to 8% of my damage. At times, I've seen it being 2 or 1. It is like the highest RNG effect of anything I've ever seen for Warlock. It is actually insane how RNG the procs in this thing are. So we'll keep going here. Fell Meteors, once again, the IF Skullball Trinket. This is the actual ring from 10.0.7. Uh, still no Brewkeeper procs, unfortunately. Still going. Still praying for a proc. Still not getting one. Let's over here a bit more. Still not getting a proc. Still praying. Still not getting a proc. Uh, I'm not going to go forever, but TLDR, you get the idea. It's RNG on top of RNG, on top of RNG, on top of RNG, on top of RNG. So the actual ring does indeed, like this this effect here, seems to proc more for Destro and Demo that, that does AF. Even if they fix the proc rate a bit, it's still not it's still not worth playing the Arena Chosen for AF. The proc rate's just too low. There's so much RNG. Whenever they change Inquisitor's Gaze to be a random summon, and not a, a consistent source of damage, it killed the ring for AF. And unfortunately, it's not being fixed in 0.07. So that should wrap it up. Thanks for watching, dudes. Hopefully the video wasn't too long. Not a... Not an incredibly large amount of Warlock changes, or really any changes for any class coming in, unless you're a Rep Paladin. That's basically a new spec in the game uh, in 10.0.7. But Locke did get a handful of changes a few weeks ago. It's been a slow few weeks for PTR. No word of 10.1 hitting PTR yet. I'm very surprised at this point. Um, the, I'm assuming 10.1 is going to take probably at least eight weeks, if not nine or ten, for raid testing and things to get done which I was hoping it'd be like early to mid-May, but at this point, I don't know. Um, your guess is as good as mine. Hopefully we get a blue post or some communication soon because uh, I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, either way, I'm pumped for lock changes in 10.0.7. Like these changes here might've been sort of minor, but the big ones two weeks ago, they're still coming. Uh, apps looking pretty insane. Dash was looking pretty solid in the first place, albeit uh, mechanically a bit, you know, awkward. And even Demo with immutable hatred hopefully umbral blaze, umbral blaze getting some changes and uh reign of tyranny being buffed by a good bit too 
also looking pretty fun. So we'll see where that goes. Um, yeah, and I guess just go from there. So let me know what you guys think of, I guess, the changes or really like, I don't know, your takes on just like the 10.047 ring and things down below. We haven't talked about it a whole lot. Uh, any questions, put them on there as well. I'll be sure to get back to you. If there is relevancy in the 10.0.7 ring, which by the way, you can upgrade the gems in that ring from 410 to 421, which should do more damage. I don't believe it increases the proc rate, but we don't know. No one has the pattern yet on PTR, but if we know more, we'll figure it out. If Sims come out, we'll look at that too. Um, but yeah, if you have any comments or questions, put them down below and I will uh, be sure to get back to you. Once again, any weak words, add on to profiles, link to Twitch and Discord down below where they're all available for free to you guys. And as always, I want to give one huge shout out to my, my patrons for in the video. Thank you a million times for supporting Patreon, you guys. Again, I uh, just really appreciate it. Uh, if you're looking at supporting on Patreon, it should be up here as well as down below in the video description. And I appreciate it a million times, guys. It allows me to keep doing what I'm doing for you guys, making content. And uh, yeah, just thank you. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, I don't know, man, hopefully the patch is coming out soon. Uh, hopefully we get some communication at when 0.7 is hitting. The last few patches have been pretty small. So I, I was sort of hoping we get a release candidate build this week, but we didn't get a blue post yesterday. So I was sort of like, eh, about it. Um, I guess glass half full is a small patch. Could mean that the, this weekend could be a release candidate build and maybe we get it in two-ish weeks. We'll see. Um, we're getting close, but I think Warlock's going to rise up a good bit in popularity. Damage, playability, once the patch hits. So, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Later this week, we'll have a Sims video coming out, as well as a What is Wrong with Destro video. And, uh, yeah, I'm putting a lot of work into that video, so hopefully uh, you guys like it. So, with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like and sub button below if you like, if you like the video. It helps out a ton. And I will catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.